Hello viewers, Ford DIYers here with another video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be reviewing this industrial bore scope inspection camera made by Tess Long, model number NTS500. Both the links to their camera on Amazon and their website will be included in the video description, so be sure to check it out. As you can see, it comes neatly packed in a plastic hard case. The case features both pivots on the rear and on the front latches so you don't have to worry about the plastic tabs breaking off like on some cases with just a flexible plastic joint. Once opened up, first we have a manual which has a variety of languages including English, German, Japanese and Chinese. Next is a screen. While it is compact, they have maximized the size of the screen so any details can be viewed easily. No apps or usage of external devices are required. This is a complete standalone system. There is a spot to connect a tether, a LED light on the back side for working in dark areas, the power button along the bottom, the camera is controlled using the buttons on the right side, screw on camera connection at the top, and a speaker at the rear. It has a 5 inch LCD screen with a 1280 by 720 HD display and it has an IP67 rating. The IP67 meaning it has no ingress of dust and it's protected for water submersion for up to 1 meter or about 3 feet. It also comes with a 32 gig micro SD card which is accessed at the bottom by pulling back a rubber door. The charging port is also located here. The camera is equipped with a 3500 milliamp lithium ion battery. Also included is the USB charging cable. The camera cable is available in two lengths. One is 1 meter or about 3 feet and the other is 3 meters or about 10 feet. The camera has a diameter of 5.5 millimeters or 0.021 inches. Unlike many other borescopes, this one is equipped with two cameras. One is at the front and the other is at the side for a perpendicular view which is great for a variety of tight spaces. These cameras can be toggled by the button on the connector which I'll show you in a moment. Both the cameras can be submerged in water and can illuminate with the built-in LEDs allowing for detailed views in dark spaces. The LEDs are controlled by a button and also have three brightness settings. The camera cable screws onto the main body. The connector construction is aluminum so there's no need to worry about having the parts crack or break as what you may find with a plastic part. With a screwed on connection, if you're working in an awkward space, you also don't have to worry about the camera becoming disconnected. In order to turn on the camera, press and hold the power button on the main body until the screen turns on. Scrolling through the interface on the camera, as mentioned earlier, the LED brightness is controlled by a light button. Press it various times to control the brightness setting or to turn it on and off. The next button below that's used to control either taking a photo or for recording. The OK button is used to select or prompt various settings. The up and down arrows are used to rotate the image on the screen, scroll through the options and scroll through videos or photos on the memory card. The M button allows you to select the three different modes being playback, photo and video. And finally the gear button is used for the settings on the main camera or for any saved media on the SD card. On the screen the top left will have an icon showing what mode is currently active. On the top right this will indicate if the memory card is installed along with the current battery charge. The bottom left will show when the video mode is recording and the bottom right indicates a date and time stamp. When in playback mode, the date and time stamps will be shown and towards the bottom left will indicate the shortcut controls for fast forwarding or rewinding a video, pause and play. The camera can be used in a variety of fields for those who do projects at home to mechanics, electricians, plumbers, carpenters, dealers, building inspectors, auto body, etc. For me, it'll definitely help me inspect vehicles for purchasing, sourcing out issues and providing better detailed videos for you, my subscribers. In order to switch the cameras, there is a button on the cable connection. Press this, the camera will take a second before it switches over and the new view will show up on the screen. This is unedited sample footage that I took with the camera, viewing other components such as tags inside the frame for inspecting for rust, behind the fenders to determine if they've been patched, behind the rockers to also determine if they've been repaired, leaks around seals, etc. Being in Canada, I know frame rot can be a serious issue and the camera alone can prevent making a bad purchase. Frames can easily look good on the outside, regardless if they've been repaired or original. However, having a view on the inside can really show what's behind all that. 
you'll need to ensure the camera lens is clean which would apply to any bore scope. The camera cable remains stiff so it maintains its shape while being able to still be pushed through tighter spaces. The camera does have a high quality construction and feels like it's built to last. It can easily view any fine details and the image is still clear in the darkest of spaces. There's no need to worry about disconnection over a wireless connection and I prefer this style when compared to one that's paired to a phone. I have been using this camera for a few different projects which you'll see in the future. It's certainly a great addition to anyone's tool collection. Have you purchased this product? Please be sure to share your experiences in the comments below. New videos are released every week on my channel. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It's a huge help to me and leave a comment below if you found this tutorial helpful. And if you're not a subscriber, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching.